Okay, great. Okay, we're just on time. Um, so welcome to everyone who followed us over to, to this session. You made a very good choice because we've got really exciting um, discussions and information from both the task force and working group. So today we have from the learning and development group, we have the co-leads, we have Elena Giannini uh, with us from the learning and development working group. And we also have Katie Robinson, Robertson, sorry, who's here from the learning and development working group. And then for the child labor task force, we have Silvia Nyate, who's here as the co-lead of the task force and the co-lead as well of the child labor task force, Simon Hills. So welcome to all of our co-leads presenters and to kick it off, I'm gonna hand it over to Katie. Thanks so much, Susan. Um, hi, everybody. To get us started, we're actually just gonna play a short video um, with some updates on the newest uh, resources and products that the LND Working Group has been working on. So all things that are available now. Um, if you've already seen this video once today, then maybe on the second watch, think about which, uh, which tools are most useful for you. Um, and we're gonna ask a question about that in a, in a minute. But if we can play the video, Jessica, thank you. The Learning and Development Working Group at the Alliance for Child Protection in Humanitarian Action is pleased to announce that the following products are now available. Our new strategy sets out our objectives, learning approach, principles and key actions to inform learning and development at the Alliance in the coming years. The strategy is currently available in English, French and Spanish. A one-page infographic highlighting the key points from the strategy is also available in English, French, Spanish and Arabic. The Child Protection in Humanitarian Action Competency Framework, which we released in 2020, is now available also in French and Spanish. And we, are also, we have also developed some accompanying tools to uh, facilitate its use in staff recruitment, performance management, etc. These tools include a three hours face to face uh, training or remotely facilitated training session on the purpose, structure, and content of the framework, a tool uh, to use the framework in drafting job descriptions, another one to facilitate the use of the competency framework in, uh, in competency-based interviews, and finally, a tool to uh, facilitate the use of the framework in performance management. The l and Toolkit is available in English, French and Spanish. It contains a series of guidance, tools and templates for CPHA practitioners who are involved in designing and delivering training and learning activities, but who are not learning and development experts by background. The Toolkit can support you with assessing learning needs, designing and developing learning activities, implementing and evaluating training and learning. With the generous support of the American people through the Bureau of Humanitarian Assistance at the United States Agency for International Development, we have developed a series of COVID-19 learning resources, including case studies and webinars on innovative approaches to capacity strengthening during COVID-19, a video series on safely using platforms and apps for remote programming, Massive open online course on protecting children during COVID-19 and other infectious diseases outbreak, which has been adapted to run on demand in English and Spanish, now featuring on Future Learn platform. Eight new face-to-face -face and remotely facilitated child protection learning modules. Transitioning to remote case management during COVID-19. Delivering case management via phone. Preventing family separation during COVID-19. Child protection mainstreaming in health facilities. CAFAG and COVID-19. CAFAG program continuity during COVID-19. Promoting mental health and psychosocial well-being of children during COVID-19. Supporting children, families and communities during COVID-19. Plus a module on delivering training remotely to support the rollout of the modules where face-to-face -face training is not possible. 10 learning tools, including tip sheets, posters, and animation. A webinar series available on the Alliance YouTube channel. 
English versions of all resources are now available on the Alliance website and French, Spanish and Arabic version will be available by the end of October the latest. For more information, join the L&D Working Group events at the annual meeting or contact us on learning at alliancecpha.org. Thanks, Jessica. Um, and I see Elena has just shared the links to the resources in the chat. And Angelisa just pointed out that um, six of the nine modules are available in all the languages already via the microsite that's in the chat now. So um, we just wanted to give an opportunity if anybody's got any burning questions about anything they saw in the video, then do ask us now. Otherwise, um, I will hand back to Elena for the minty. Uh, thank you, Katie. So yeah, maybe just to flag that Angelis was actually on the call, we forgot to mention Angelisa Diveni has been uh, a great part together with all of like the members of the learning and development working group in making these resources happen. So shout out to Angelis as well as on the call. Um, there are two mentees or maybe there is just the first mentee in the chat, um, which is um, the first question on the ment is which one of the following resources do you think are or maybe more relevant for your work like and it would be nice to see you voting just to get a sense for ourselves like or what could be most useful to you so we have the learning and development strategy and the infographics on the strategy itself which are a shorter version probably more accessible, my taste, my preference. Training models on the competency frameworks, tools to use the competency framework and on the various levels and the learning and development toolkit to design training experiences. If you could all take a second to vote. Is the mentee working? It looks like no one is. Mm. Okay. I am going to try myself. Yeah, I just voted. So it should. If it's not refreshing. Um... Sorry, you have to see more of me today. <laughs> I apologize for that. Um, okay, let's give it a second, see if Jessica can pull that back up. Hmm. For some reason, it doesn't seem to be updating. Okay, well, like I hope like we can retrieve like this information because it would be really cool for us like to see what you were thinking. Um, and there was another mentee. Shall we try the other one, uh, which is specifically on the COVID-19 resources that we have released. And we were trying to ask you like which ones you think are um, going to be most useful to you. But I'm not going to put you through the stress of the mentee. Like the message that we want to put across is that it would be really nice if you were like to spend maybe five minutes like after these sessions to go through the links we shared and see what's in there. You might not be able to use it right away, but at least you'll be a bit more comfortable on the resources that we have developed. And also, if you're struggling with the use of those resources, like do please um, write to us, like reach out to myself, Katie and Angelisa, the rest of the team, because we are really there to help. With that, I'll leave this initial bit, I'll leave the floor to Silvia, uh, and we'll talk a bit more of what we have in the pipeline in a bit, in a minute, like after Silvia. Go ahead, please. Uh, thank you, Elena. So now, like Simon and myself, we're going to present uh, shortly on the resources available for the Excalibur Task Force. And then we want to also have some time for, with you to discuss on how you have used it uh, or like, you know, how would you use the resources? Uh, so over to Simon for taking us through the, the summary of the Child Labor Task Force resources available. Thanks, Sylvia. And if you can share the presentation. With a slide on the Talibot Task Force resources. That'll be great. 
Okay. Do you need One me? One moment, sorry. Yeah. Thanks. Maybe while uh, putting the slide up, I'm going to write the question that we will have, you know, we want to discuss afterwards with the participants on how have you used or you will use the toolkit or the other resources. Because actually we want to hear, yeah, we want to hear from you. Perfect. And um, so as Sylvia was saying, we just want to give an overview of who we are, what we do, and take this opportunity to get feedback. So we'll, we'll look to get that once we've finished. So please provide it as we go along. Um, on how the resources could be used. Uh, as we said earlier, the, the Child Labour Task Force is co-led by Plan International and ILO, or myself and uh, Sylvia as well. Um, the main priorities are to um, ensure coordination and collaboration to strengthen the quality and effectiveness of child labour um, prevention in humanitarian action. Um, as you can see on here, we've got a number of uh, main resources and tools and uh, guidance. We've got the work um, and the learning information around CPMS 12, the interagency toolkits. We've got resources which we developed during uh, COVID-19 uh, and there are regional versions of the toolkit. Some are finished and some more are coming online. Um, in terms of capacity building, we've got information on the e-course training package competency framework, uh, and hopefully we will have some country, um, regional or global uh, launches of these uh, tools as well. And then working together on coordination policy and advocacy around World Day Against Child Labour. Obviously this year as well for the elimination of child labour, um, working on sustainable development goal 8.7 for the elimination of child labour as well and seeing where and how we can uh, coordinate through the task force as well. Over to you, Sylvia. Thank you. Thank you very much, Simon. And I can see like some people are starting to share already, like you know, how you're going through the resources and this is great. And I think that's the yeah, opportunity to also show um, how, like, you know, what, what feedback do you have from the resources? I'm going to share, you can go to the next slide. Um, please, we will see like the microsite. So all the resources that Simon have mentioned, uh, we also to make it like friendly and easy like it, to access all of them in one place. So we have created this microsite, the Child Labor Task Force has created this microsite where you see um, like very short information, like not a lot of text and you can click on the toolkit that you can download and it can be like for printing, but also to be uh, access online so with all the icons and hyperlinks and there's no need to go through everything but you can like uh, self-navigate and then like uh, you know go from one place to another like you know very easily to navigate and also case studies practical tools and you know additional resources so there's like all the different links and resources are available in this micro site we already put in the in the chat but we also want to take the opportunity to uh, hear from you and hear from some of the examples of colleagues that have already been using some of the materials and resources. So we share, like Simon and I share on the whole of the press, some examples, but also to hear from others, uh, maybe like areas that they would like, you know, like you know, to use it in the, in the future or like, you know, uh, any feedback. Uh, and we have a Mentimeter uh, with a question on how you have used them or you could use them. And then we'd like to share with you, know, with you um, and then like feel free also to take uh, the mic and then share with, we have like some like 10 minutes for this discussion. And I think it will be really good to have, you know, feedback from, from you bef before like we talk about more the upcoming. So the Menti is on the chat. Uh, let's see if it's working. You tell me if it's working. Otherwise, you can also share the inform, like you know, your answers. You can also share in the chat. Uh, so feel free to share also in the chat how you have used the resources uh, or you will planning to use the resources. I see that there's a colleague that is uh, is working, is looking at the toolkit to use it in the, in Turkey cross border. Uh, so if you want to share more, uh, I'm also happy to share some other examples in the meantime. 
Um, you can raise your hand or you can take the microphone. Sylvia, Julie is going to come in and share um, the All minute because right. on my side it's not working for some reason. Okay. So sorry about that. Do you want me to put it up now? Question two or question yeah, one? Please. Yeah, question two. Which question? Uh, how question have you used three? Question three. Yes. Yeah, oh, question, question three. three. Okay, coming up now. And Looks like nobody's. I want to like you know remind about some of the examples uh, that we had in. You know, for some colleagues that were going to join, but I think they had not been possible to join. Um, some have been used in the coordinator like checklist, or they have been used in the child labor key messages. Others are planning to use the you know indicators for child labor for assessment. I, I can hear some background noise. Okay, now it's perfect. So um, we have some several examples. Uh, many actually coming from Middle East, uh, where there's a lot of experience, and actually a lot of the case studies and work uh, that actually help like create the toolkit, the global toolkit comes from Middle East. Uh, but we also like to hear from others on how you've been using, how what do you find useful, so then uh, others can learn. And I can see that uh, people have been using the case studies, which you can find in the, in the microsite. So there's like short case studies um, that help you, for example, when like showing like, you know, how the coordination work in Turkey or how the multi-sectoral work for, like in Lebanon for using like you know, cash and prevention and response to child labor uh, to design capacity building sessions. So, okay, there's a, uh, some colleagues have been using it for capacity building session or planning to do. Um, design the child labor response in Syria and planning for training for child protection staff. Um, and I have to say that we have included also in the toolkit some examples of child labor strategies and then key actions. Like the toolkit is quite like practical oriented with like bullet points or like key actions to consider when uh, designing a child labor response and who to involve. Uh, also, I can see like other colleagues uh, for annual planning purposes, sharing in the child protection global team meetings. So yeah, for like awareness raising or like sharing within the organization. Feel free to also raise your hand if you prefer to take the microphone or write it in the chat. Um, I think it's good to you know to see like you know how people are using it and how we can learn from each other. I can see a lot of uh, input actually coming from Middle East. Uh, we'll share later also other experiences uh, for from other regions. I have recommended the tools for multi-sectoral assessment in Northwest Syria and child labor, and exactly like on the part three of the toolkit. Uh, which includes prevention and response action, also takes not only responses, uh, you know, actions for child, child protection, but also looks at other sectors. So it looks at uh, health, education, food security, livelihood. So it's quite a useful practical resource as well to use with uh, other humanitarian sector colleagues and to share within your organization, but also with your agency for those that are working at, uh, you know, in coordination. Also, if you have any um, questions about the resources that have been shared, it's also an opportunity to ask the questions uh, to find out more. Uh, Simon and I, we want to share like in for some of the you know, country colleagues uh, from organizations, but also um, from working groups, we are like supporting uh, to roll out and to disseminate the information. Uh, so feel free to reach out if you, you know, want to help like navigate, but also if you have um, any opportunity or any capacity to help on the rollout, um, and we'll be happy to collaborate and work together. And with that, I can see that there are no more additions. Um, I want to like now pass it to Katie for like we are going to talk now about upcoming resources both for both the learning development working group and after uh, for the child labor task force. And in the meantime, you can also write in the chat if you have any questions. Thank you. Over to you, Katie. Thanks so much, Sylvia. Um, Jessica, would you mind putting the slides? Thank you. Great. 
So we're just going to talk about what's coming up for the L&D working group. And the first one's really exciting. Um, so we're working on a new CPHA community of practice um, in partnership with the CPAOR. So this slide is just telling you a little bit about the process that we've, we've been working on so far. So we started in April, May, looking at the different platforms that are available and um, the different features and functions on those. Um, we then did a survey of potential users. Some of you maybe filled that in to understand which were the most important features for the platform to have. Um, and we did some key informant interviews with other uh, kind of the coordinators of other communities of practice within the, within the broader sector, uh, just to learn from them, see what, what they would advise in setting up a new platform, how to make it really engaging and, and user friendly. And then we've consulted with a, a core advisory group of kind of key stakeholders um, and potential users of the new community of practice uh, to narrow down the list. So we narrowed down to a short list of five and then we, we did a bit more uh, research into the, the features of those platforms. And then we voted in September on the way forward. So if we could go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, so it's exciting to tell you that we've chosen a new platform. So we're going to be having a CPHA community within the existing Change Makers for Children platform. Um, so we looked at probably about 20 different options in the end. Um, and this is the one that was voted the favorite by quite a big margin by the, the core advisory group. Um, and some of the key features, so it's fully integrated with Google Translate, which is really exciting. So you can translate the whole, uh, the whole community into the language of your choice, just with the click of a button. Um, there's an app version available that came out from the review group is quite important. There's no geographical restriction, so there's no countries where the platform is banned or not available. Um, there's an embedded resource library, so we can keep kind of posts and resources separately, which came up as a big request. Uh, there's options to post publicly and privately, and there's lots of ways to manage your own notification settings to, to whatever your preferences are for how often you want to, to hear about the community practice. Um, so we should be launching in mid-October, which is very soon, in the next few weeks, and we will uh, ask you to stay tuned. We'll be sharing more information as we have it, but we're working hard to get the platform set up and ready for launch in the next few weeks. Um, Eleanor, over to you. On a maybe less intriguing topic, Katie, but uh, um, we're really pleased about where we are at with the community of practice, but also with our uh, upcoming learning packages. If you can move to the next slide, um, Jessica, please. So we have two quite big pieces on the go at the moment. One is what we call the CPHA, CPMS learning package. We have used another name prior to this name, which was Foundational Learning Package. And prior, prior to that, it was known as the CPIE Face-to-Face -face Learning Package. There is an evolution on the names, but bear with me. You'll understand what I'm talking about in a second. And then the Frontliners Learning Package. So if you can move to the next slide. There are, uh, as I said, quite, mm, quite two core uh, learning packages to the sector. And uh, in terms of audience, they have a quite a distinct setup. So the frontliner learning package, it aims, uh, it's aimed at frontline workers, as the title says, uh, who are locally recruited with some or maybe little experience on child protection in humanitarian action with some or little training on it. And they may or they may come from a variety of of backgrounds with different literacy levels and expertise, right? On the other end, the CPHA CPMS learning package is um, foundational in its nature, and uh, it's around key concepts on child protection in humanitarian action and child protection minimum standards, and it's geared towards uh, uh, child protection practitioners that may be in development and would like to get ready, prepare for eventual crisis, government officials that may coordinate this effort, 
other humanitarian professionals they may want to manage like multi-sectoral responses better and understand child protection in humanitarian action in that framework or more generally uh, humanitarian or development professional and interested in child protection in humanitarian actions. So we're talking more manager coordinator type of level. And if we can move to the next slide, please. The objectives, so the aim, the main aim of like both packages are also quite different. Like on the frontliner side of things, we would like to make sure that we equip frontliners with at least the very core of um, skills and competences to be able to deliver their work in a safe, effective and professional manner from the start. So that quick training that you go to when you are starting a child protection response. On the other end, the CPHA, CPMS learning package, it's uh, geared towards uh, participants building more of an awareness of their role in preventing and responding to child protection risks through sectoral or intersectoral intervention in humanitarian, in, in humanitarian setting in line with the child protection minimum standards. If we can move to the next slide. And just to say the frontline, uh, the frontliners learning package is obviously aligned to the CPMS as well. Uh, the nature, so the structure of both packages is different. Like for frontliners, like we have thought of uh, five half day modules that you can kind of stitch together to the best of your possibility on the ground. It can be delivered face-to-face -face or remotely. So we provide instructions for those type, for both type of settings. We have geared it like, we have inched it like on a reflective experience. So it entails keeping a learning journal and uh, it builds on that throughout. It's mainly designed to be delivered as single agency, but it can be adapted as opposed to other contexts. The CPHA CPMS learning package on the other end is blended in nature, so it entails some self-learning which needs to happen prior to your live experience, which, is, which can be face-to-face -face or remotely facilitated. I think we're looking at five days more or less for face-to-face -face facilitation. It has some optional follow-up sessions that we're thinking of and this one lends itself like to um, more interagency type of settings oh, and i think with that that's it like on this upcoming learning packages maybe one question which will come up is the time frame so i hope to be able to have out the or we hope Kitty, <laughs> to have out the frontliner learning package by later in the month and the CPHA, CPMS learning package, I hope, prior to the end of the year. At least, if not in the final, final copy edited, designed, like um, fancy schmancy version, at least in their uh, final drafts type of version, hopefully. Thanks, I think that's uh, over to you, Katie, right? And Jessica, if you can move maybe to the next slide. Yeah, thanks, Eleanor. Um, oh, no, sorry, no, I I one more thing. <laughs> I forgot, silly me, sorry, Katie. So in case, I have thought like of this flowchart in case you get confused like about what models to use. But if you're clear, don't listen to me because I don't want to cause further complications, okay? So my the first questions I would pose myself like to choose between these learning packages is whether your audience is going to work or coordinate child protection in humanitarian action interventions. If it's no, it means you're probably looking at other sectors and how to integrate child protection within that sector. So, so this is probably, these are not probably not the right resources for you. And we probably look more at the work that the CPMS working group will do on working across sectors and we'll be cooperating with them on that. 
If your answer is yes, then you need to ask yourself another question, which is, is your audience going to work in close contact with the communities that have been impacted by a crisis? And if your answer is yes, then you're probably encouraged to use the frontliners learning package as a starting point for your capacity strengthening efforts. If the answer is no, it's probably likely that you're better set to use the CPH, CPMS learning package. So that this time is truly all from my side and I'll leave the floor to Kate. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. Um, so I think we just have one more slide. Yes, which is just a reminder of the um, L&D events in the second week of the annual meeting. So on Tuesday, the 19th, um, we've got the L&D face-to-face, not face-to-face, -face, but the L&D working group get together. So we'll be having some updates from our um, membership on initiatives they're working on. And we'll also spend some time uh, trying to, well, thinking about the L&D working group work plan and how to align that with the new Alliance strategy. And then on Friday, the 22nd, we've got a bonus session. Um, we're doing a workshop on competency-based learning um, and what that means and how we can do it. So if you're interested in attending that, please let us know. Just send us a message in the chat or you can write to learning at alliancepha.org and we will make sure you've got the invite um, for those. And then finally, just one last thing. If anybody is... Um, here, but is not a member of the LD working group, but would like to receive updates from us, would like to join a mailing list, then please just let us know on this form that I've just put in the chat. That would be great. And we'll make sure you get all of our updates um, after the annual meeting as well. Cool. So, handing back over to you, Sylvia, Simon. It's me. Thank you. So, if we move to the next slide. Um, I mean, you've already heard quite a bit from us today, even in a condensed form on some of the resources we already have and are available through the Child Labour Task Force. Um, but now we just want to update you on um, some of the upcoming and almost ready uh, resources we have, which are linked to the toolkit as well. Um, number one the list is the uh, Middle East and North Africa Regional Toolkit, um, which looks um, at the specific legal framework of the region, relevant case studies only for the region, and will also be uh, translated all into Arabic. Um, it's currently being translated and reviewed at the moment, um, and I think we need some help in terms of uh, review and the design process as well. So if you are interested in helping out with that, please do let us know. Um, we formed a small group at the moment with those interested in the MENA uh, region to support the rollout and in supporting uh, the training package as well. So do feel free to uh, let us know in regards to that as well. Um, switching over to Latin America, we're looking to have a Latin American version, um, which again will focus on the specific legal framework there and translation as well to assist. Um, translation and review is in the final stages. Again, if you have any interest and ability to support that, do let us know and uh, your help is very much appreciated. And then finally, moving away from regional versions of the toolkit, we have a modular training package to accompany the toolkit, um, which should help practitioners to learn and develop um, their skills and knowledge on child labor. The training package includes um, a self-taught part, which follows the CPMS module, pre-recorded webinars on key concepts and um, risks and protective factors. And then we have a online facilitated or remote learning uh, component, uh, which includes 15 modules of slide decks, the facilitator guide and additional resources. Um, the training package has been sent for review to the Child Labour Task Force and will be with us until the 18th October and then the next step is to finalize the copy editing and translation if we can, uh, which should be done. Over to you Sylvia, thank you. Thank you Simon for this like great summary not only of the you know current resources but also the upcoming and uh, hope like it's very clear and feel free to reach out if you are like interested in rollout or any of the you know regional toolkits or the training package and now we want to also share 
that we will have like our annual child labor task force meeting. So in as part of the coordination in the child labor task force, we have regular coordination calls and annually we have our face-to-face -face meeting. And uh, since last year, we have the remote annual child labor task force meeting. And this is on Wednesday, October 20th, and it will um, last like two hours. So if anyone is interested and haven't received yet uh, the invitation, you can also contact us as, uh, in the email you can see in the screen and we can also write in the chat. And like the agenda, what we will focus on in the annual meeting is to first like, you know, have highlight like few presentations of these initiative projects that have uh, interesting, like innovative, uh, evidence-based. Uh, so we will have like work child, we will have as well like, you know, PACE partnership. We will have as well like, you know, FAO sharing uh, information about the global event on child labor and agriculture ha uh, happening in November. So we have like several presentations uh, as well as of our like colleagues in Jordan that have just formed a child labor task force. So we'll have like a first uh, section of the agenda looking at sharing in, like initiatives, projects on child labor. And then we will also uh, focus on the second part of the, of the meeting on more our work plan. You know, what is the progress? Uh, how, you know, what are the, like, the resources? What is pending? And also to ensuring like, you know, we cover um, all the, all the initiatives that, that we have mentioned in our work plan and to respond to the questions by all the different members and especially to launch also the you know, upcoming resources. And then we'll have time to also discuss on our next steps for the Child Labor Task Force and see how we can ways of working and continue to work together. So please like reach out uh, if you're interested in joining the, the meeting or if you have interest uh, to learn more, to navigate or to support the rollout of the toolkit and all the accompanying uh, resources. And we'll share again the microsite where it's like the one place to go. And we're happy to take time to also uh, help you navigate. Um, so over to Susan or the colleagues, I think that we might have like few minutes in case like there's any questions for, you know, related to the annual meeting or related to the upcoming resources. Uh, any interest? Uh, otherwise, over to you, Susan, and we can also give back some minutes for people to have a, you know, a longer break. Thank you. Thanks, Sylvia. Yeah, if any, we have a few minutes. So if anyone has any questions, please just go and write it in the chat now, and we'll have a few minutes to, to answer it. But otherwise, um, it's really exciting to hear everything that's upcoming and the resources that are coming out. And I see in the chat that lots of people are excited, um, especially for all the work that seems to be coming out just October, November, end of the year. It's going to be busy, busy and exciting. So great to hear about everything. Um, and I'll just give a thank you to Sylvia, to Simon, to Elena, to Katie. You have their, their contacts. Um, so do follow up if you wanted, and um, there was the Google link to um, receive information from the L&D Working Group. Um, it's up in the chat and feel free to be in contact with them. I don't see any questions in the chat. So I think we are actually going to end a little bit early. So instead of a five minute break before the next session, you have a 10 minute break. So go do whatever it is you want to do for 10 minutes um, and we'll see you yeah soon in actually 11 minutes so enjoy your 11 minutes thanks everyone <laughs>